Look, if you've watched The Office, you know who BJ Novak is, but he's not just prominent in front of the camera, but behind it. Today, we're talking about his feature film debut, Vengeance. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel, BJ Novak, Ashton Kutcher. This is Vengeance. It's a Batman impression, not a good one. I like BJ Novak a lot. I think he's a good writer, so I was excited to see what he would do behind the camera. We're going to get into it right now, so. A radio host from New York City attempts to solve a murder of a girl he hooked up with and travels down south to investigate the circumstances of her death and discover what actually happened to her written and directed by BJ Novak. And this movie is rated R for language and very brief violence, but it's not one of the most hard R movies I've ever watched, and honestly, it felt more PG-13 at times. Look at the cast here, I mentioned Ashton Kutcher, Boyd Holbrook, who I absolutely love, Issa Rae, who is amazing, and of course, starring BJ Novak in a movie that he wrote and directed, so he knows exactly what he wants and what he needs from himself, and in that way, I believe he delivers a compelling performance, an interesting character, someone who is so unaware of the situation he's about to get himself in when he gets that phone call that he has to go to this funeral. But instead of going to a funeral all about someone that he knows and is really close to, he doesn't know all that much about her because her parents, her family, they are convinced that they were in a relationship even though, and we get an entire scene at the beginning of the movie with a great cameo in there, my wife saw it, she was she was quivering. But that opening sequence points to how things are a lot different in Texas compared to where he comes from, an area like New York, and how relationships, they do not operate in the same way, and really how he just doesn't feel like he wants to be tied down in a relationship. But when the two very different ideologies meet, you have so many ideas that clash and the people are just so different in Texas compared to New York. That's a theme all throughout this movie. That's when we get our, uh, at times, really hilarious gags. And the humor in this film, I mean, look, it's dry, it's subtle. A lot of it is playing on the perception of Texas. So the way Novak captures this, in my opinion, is brilliant. It's the perception that we have of that area, right? They go to Whataburger and they talk about the, uh, the clash between Texas Tech and Texas fans. It's like all those little nuggets and nods and Easter eggs. And of course, they're going to play those things up in this movie. But the way that they do it, the way that they go about it, it feels authentic, it feels hilarious at times, and I appreciated it. It never came across as trying to do something that could tiptoe on that line of being offensive to people that actually live in Texas, and I don't know, but I have a lot of friends and peers that live in Texas, so I probably should have asked them before this review, and I did not. There's a fly over there. Another thing I really respect about this movie is the fact that it captures not only one genre, but multiple, right? It has the comedy. There's a mystery at play because while he goes down for one very specific thing, well, he's a writer, but he's currently in the business of making a podcast. And things get so interesting revolving around this death, he decides, you know what? I'm going to take this to my editor, played brilliantly by Issa Rae. And I mean brilliantly. I could have watched their relationship all throughout this movie and had no qualms, no issues. But it starts to get interesting because there's a mystery element element at play. So it's a comedy, it's a mystery, it's obviously a bit of a western. Uh, there are moments that are thrilling, so you could consider it a thriller. Uh, BJ Novak, what he does here is he beautifully balances multiple genres. And even though I wasn't thrilled with where the movie ended, we'll talk about that here in just a second, I like the attempt, and I like where his head's at with this movie, right? He's doing things, he's talking about things, and he's balancing these ideas that we don't often get in these either featured debuts or independent movies nowadays, and I appreciate what he brought with this movie, and it doesn't feel like he's a first-time feature-length director. It feels like he's been doing this for at least two to three movies. Now, even though I was laughing, I was locked into this dynamic when he comes and visits the family, the way that they treat him is something that maybe he was not expecting. Uh, there is a dip in the movie in the second act when he goes off and starts interviewing some random people, and there's a bit of a montage in there. I wasn't as invested in those moments as I was when it's a bit more, uh, when it's a bit more entertaining, if you will, and I'm not going to say the movie made me lose interest in its entirety, but it did feel a bit dull in those moments. 
And then we get to the end, and the way we're ramping up to that ending was great. I'm like, all right, let's see what happens with this mystery. And something happens, and I won't say what happens in the third act, that made me question a few elements. This is the only time in the movie when I said, the writing, it doesn't feel as strong here because it's going to be hard to tiptoe around and say a character does something in the third act and it didn't feel like the actions that he or she does was true to what the buildup was prior to that. Does that make sense? Well, if it doesn't, you may want to go watch the movie because that decision left me a bit cold. It left me a bit distant. I said, I don't know if what we've seen so far truly built up to that moment. It felt out of the blue, and maybe that's what it was supposed to feel like, but you're supposed to progress to that point, but it felt like we were progressing to something a bit different, and then when we got that, I said, I didn't truly feel satisfied, and I talked to my wife after the movie was over. She had the same complaint. We both enjoyed the film, and I appreciate what Novak was doing, especially with that subtle sense of humor in there, but that moment left me distant, and then the movie ends, and I was like, ah. Oh. It was unexpected. I give him kudos for that, but I just don't know if I liked it. That being said, it's time to score this movie. What is the best comedy of the year so far? If you enjoyed this review, be sure to drop that thumbs up. It helps this channel and the algorithm. Vengeance is full of unexpected twists and tonal shifts. While the finale may leave some cold, the buildup is hilarious, authentic, and creative. It is indeed a recommendation from me if you like these genres. 71% with my score. I need you guys down below letting me know. Are you watching Vengeance when it comes to a theater near you? Are you a fan? of B.J. Novak, Issa Rae, Ashton Kutcher, and Boyd Holbrook. All right, guys, I'll be seeing you soon.